Hello students, in the last class we have studied about the mechanisms, four mechanisms. Out of four mechanisms, we are considering two mechanisms in your board examination. Then next you consider the inorganic questions. Then it is manufacturers, preparations. One is preparation of ammonia by Ebers process, preparation of uh, nitric acid by Ostwald's process, and third one is sulfuric acid by contact process. Among these three, they can ask one question. Each question carries three marks. Now consider, first one is manufacture of ammonia. Manufacture of ammonia. Ammonia means NH3. Manufacture of ammonia by using Haber's process. The process name is you know, Haber's process. Manufacture of ammonia by Haber's process. In this Haber's process, ammonia is prepared by direct combination. Direct combination of nitrogen and hydrogen. Direct combination of nitrogen and hydrogen in the ratio 1 is to 3. In the ratio 1 is to 3. That is nitrogen is of 1 volume, nitrogen gas, hydrogen gas, hydrogen of 3 volume. Then this is reversible to give 2 NH3 gas. 2 NH3 gas. And again, if you know that enthalpy of formation, standard enthalpy of formation, its value is minus 46.1 kilo joule per mole. Minus 46.1 kilo joule per mole. This is the reaction. This reaction carries a one mark. That is direct combination of nitrogen and hydrogen in the ratio 1 is to 3. Then by using Lee chart layers principle, Lee chart layers principle already we have studied in the first year classes the principle of the Lee chart layers statement. Lee chart layers principle. According to that Lee chart layers principle, you have to write the favorable conditions for the formation of ammonia. Favorable conditions. One of the favorable conditions is low temperature low temperature the low temperature value of 700 kelvin second favorable condition is high pressure high pressure high pressure value nearly of 200 atmosphere 200 atmosphere then third one is iron oxide small amount of iron oxide mixture of iron oxide with a small amount of K2O and Al2O3 as the catalyst. This is the catalyst used in the Ebers process. Iron oxide and small amount of K2O and Al2O3 as the catalyst. If not possible to write this mixture, you can take iron as the catalyst. Iron as the catalyst. And molybdenum, molybdenum as the promoter, molybdenum as the promoter. This is also correct. In the Ebers process, iron is the catalyst used and molybdenum is the promoter used. Or according to NCRT syllabus, that in the Ebers process, the catalyst used is iron oxide, mixture of iron oxide and small amount of K2O and Al2O3 as the catalyst. These are the favorable conditions. In some time, they can ask, write any two favorable conditions for the manufacture of ammonia by Ebers process. Then that carries two marks. Reaction carries one mark. In some, in, uh, in some cases, explain the manufacture of ammonia by Ebers process. Then you have to write the reaction that is N2 plus 3H2 gives 2NH3. Then by using Lee chart layers principle, favorable conditions are low temperature, 700 Kelvin, high pressure, 200 atmosphere and iron oxide and K2O and Al2O3 as the catalyst. Then you have to write the flow chart. Flow chart. This is the flow chart for the Ebers process. This flow chart carries one mark. In this flow chart, you have to write the labeled, labeled diagram. Without a labeled diagram, 
you will not give the mars that is first compound is nitrogen and hydrogen nitrogen and hydrogen they are passed through the compressor in that compressor we have to maintain 200 atmospheric pressure then the gases get a compress that compressed gases they are allowed into the catalyst chamber preheated catalyst chamber that catalyst chamber maintained at 700 kelvin containing iron oxide and a small amount of al2o3 and k2o this is the catalyst used in the ebers process from the catalyst chamber that night that is in the catalyst chamber nitrogen and hydrogen combine they produces the ammonia the gases coming out of the catalyst chamber are mixture of ammonia and unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen these gases then passed through the condenser condenser only ammonia get liquefied ammonia get liquefied that is here we collect the liquid ammonia unliquefied nitrogen and hydrogen are present they can be recirculated they combine fresh gases these unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen again the combines with fresh nitrogen and hydrogen in the catalyst chamber to form the ammonia this is about the flow chart for the ebers process this flow chart carries the one mark that is in the ebers process first you have to write the reaction n2 plus 3h2 n2 plus 3h2 that forms 2nh3 2 nh3 this carries one mark then flavorable condition one is low temperature low temperature value 700 kelvin then a high pressure high pressure value 200 atmosphere then catalyst the catalyst used is the iron oxide iron oxide small amount of k2o and al2o3 this favorable conditions according to lee chartier principle carries one mark then finally flow chart carries one mark this is about the ammonia by ebers process practice this reaction with flow chart next you consider the nitric acid preparation by ostwald's process second preparation is manufacture of nitric acid hno3 by ostwald's process in majority papers either they ask ebers process or ostwald's process if you throw with these two preparations definitely you get the three marks in this ostwald's process the principle used is the catalytic oxidation catalytic oxidation of ammonia by atmospheric air catalytic oxidation of ammonia by atmospheric air by using platinum rhodium in the form of wire gauze as the catalyst the catalyst used in the ostwald's process is platinum rhodium platinum symbol pt rhodium symbol is rh that platinum rhodium as the catalyst at a temperature of 500 kelvin and 9 bar pressure this is the first step first step is catalytic oxidation of ammonia by atmospheric Here, by using platinum rhodium catalyst at 500 kelvin and 9 bar pressure for this one consider the reaction nh3 ammonia atmospheric air o2 that results in the formation of nitric oxide no liberating h2o liberating h2o on the aro mark write platinum rhodium or a 500 kelvin 9 bar pressure again you have to balance this reaction without balancing 
that no reaction not carries any more that to balance this reaction you have to remember that 45 46 reactant side is 45 product side is 46 45 may ammonia is a four moles oxygen is a five moles and nitric oxide in the product side 46 46 means 4 for the nitric oxide and 6 for the H2O that is in Ostwald's process you remember to balance that reaction you remember as 45-46 then easily you can balance the reaction this one this name is an ammonia ammonia and catalytic oxidation that results in the formation of nitric oxide nitric oxide this first step carries one more second step is that nitric oxide further oxidized to nitrogen dioxide nitric oxide further oxidized to nitrogen dioxide no plus o2 gives no2 to balance this reaction you write 2 no plus o2 2 no2 again for this one represent reversible it is reversible in nature reversible direction 2 no plus o2 gives 2 no2 this is the nitric oxide nitric oxide this one is nitrogen dioxide nitric oxide further oxidized to nitrogen dioxide third step is nitrogen dioxide absorbed by water no2 absorbed by water that results in the formation of nitric acid and again nitric oxide that to balance one this 3 no2 that gives 2 hno3 reaction get balance this is a liquid nitric acid this is nitrogen dioxide nitrogen dioxide and this one is a nitric acid nitric acid this is the preparation each step carries a one mark just you practice these reactions that reactions is enough they can give the full mark that one is catalytic oxidation of ammonia by using atmospheric air in the presence of platinum rhodium catalyst at 500 kelvin 9 bar pressure nitric oxide is formed that numbers for that reaction is 45 46 that is water get removed then nitric oxide further oxidized to nitrogen dioxide 2 no plus o2 gives 2 no2 third step is nitrogen dioxide absorbed by water results in the formation of nitric acid then this formed nitric oxide here nitric oxide is formed this nitric oxide is recycled that again oxidized to nitrogen dioxide that is recycled then hno3 concentrated to 68% by mass by the process of distillation by using a distillation process we can concentrate up to 68% by mass further concentrated to 98% is very important further concentrated to 98% by dehydration with by dehydration dehydration means removal of the water by dehydration with concentrated h2so4 concentrated h2so4 by using sulfuric acid that hno3 formed by distillation process again it is concentrated to 98% by mass by using dehydration process with the help of concentrated sulfuric acid in some in some annual paper they ask uh, that 98% nitric acid obtained by which process that is by dehydration process in the help of concentrated sulfuric acid this is about the manufacture of nitric acid by ostwald's process hello students next consider the third preparation that is manufacture of sulfuric acid by contact process in this contact process first step is formation of sulfur dioxide formation or production formation of sulfur dioxide that sulfur dioxide is produced by burning sulfur in air s plus o2 gives so2 by burning sulfur in air or iron pyrite fes2 by roasting iron pyrite 4 fes2 level o2 by roasting iron pyrite we get the sulfur dioxide 
SO2 plus Fe2O3, SO2 8 moles and 2 Fe2O3. You consider either burning sulfur in air, we produce the sulfur dioxide or iron pyrite, roasting iron pyrite. By roasting the iron pyrite, we get the sulfur dioxide, SO2 gas. Then second step is the purification, purification of the gases, purification of the gases. That uh, gases can be purified before passing through the catalyst chamber. Why gases purified before passing through catalyst chamber means to prevent the to prevent the poison of catalyst. To prevent the poison of catalyst, the gases should be purified before passing through the catalyst chamber. The gases they can be purified by passing through dust chamber just uh, you remember the chambers name first one is the dust chamber dust chamber the gases these gases then uh, dried after passing through dust chamber gases can be dried by using concentrated h2so4 then the dried gases dried gases dried gases are passed through the arsenic arsenic purifier arsenic purifier to remove the arsenic impurity to remove the arsenic impurity by using ferric hydroxide arsenic impurity can be removed by using ferric hydroxide this is the purification the gases can be purified by passing through dust chamber then gases can be dried by using concentrated H2SO4 dried gases then passed into the arsenic purifier where arsenic impurity can be removed with the help of ferric hydroxide this arsenic impurity is the major catalytic poison this is about the purification third, third step is the oxidation of sulfur dioxide oxidation of sulfur dioxide or formation of the sulfur trioxide in this one that uh, purified gases that is uh, SO2 and O2 sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas yeah, passed through the catalyst chamber the catalyst chamber packed with vanadium pentoxide V2O5 catalyst, vanadium pentoxide catalyst at 720 Kelvin, 720 Kelvin and 2 bar pressure, 2 bar pressure. Here sulfur dioxide oxidized to sulfur trioxide, 2SO2 plus O2 forms the 2SO3. If you know, then you can write the enthalpy of the reaction, delta H value minus 196 kilojoule per mole. This is the enthalpy of the reaction. If you know the value, then only you write that value. Otherwise, just you write 2SO2 plus 2O2 gives 2SO3. The catalyst used is vanadium pentoxide at temperature of 720 Kelvin and 2 bar pressure. Then, fourth step is the absorption of, absorption of sulfur trioxide. Absorption of SO3. That formed sulfur trioxide in the catalyst chamber is absorbed by 98% H2SO4. 98% H2SO4. That results in the formation of H2S2O7. That H2S2O7 commonly called as the oleum. Oleum is formed. This is the third step. Sulfur trioxide absorbed by 98% H2SO4 forms H2S2O7. H2S2O7 is called oleum. Then last step is the dilution. Dilution step. In the dilution, the oleum H2S2O7 diluted with calculated amount of water to get concentrated H2SO4. That is desired concentration now H2SO4. This is the dilution step. Oleum H2S2O7 means the oleum diluted with water results in the formation now H2SO4. Just you practice these four reactions. One is S plus O2 gives SO2. Second step is 2SO2 plus 2O2 gives 2SO3. 
an RO mark mention V2O5, 720 Kelvin and 2 bar. This is the second step. Third step is SO3 plus 98% H2SO4 gives H2S2O7. Then fourth step is H2S2O7 plus water gives H2SO4. Then this carries the three marks. Nearly four marks question. Generally, they can ask from the purified sulfur dioxide. Now they are not considering the first step and second step. The, this question carries only three mark. Hence, they can ask only this part only. How from the purified sulfur dioxide? Explain the preparation now. Sulfuric acid by contact process. Then you have to write these three reactions only. Majority they can ask only this part because each reaction carries one mark. This is actually a four marks question. But in the inorganic part, only three marks is the maximum mark weightage. Hence, they can consider this question as explain the manufacture of sulfuric acid from the purified sulfur dioxide. If they are considered purified sulfur dioxide, means no need of writing first step and the second step. Only to follow these three reactions. Then, for one mark, name the reagent used to absorb the SO3 means 98% H2SO4. Again, this reaction generally used for the completing the equation. They are giving SO3 plus H2SO4 complete the equation. Then you have to write the product as H2S2O7. H2S2O7 is called OLM. Again, for one mark, for a competitive point, this is very important. SO3 SO3 not absorbed by water not absorbed by water to the SO3 if you add water directly you get H2SO4 but SO3 not absorbed by the water it not absorbed by the water why SO3 not absorbed by water mean if SO3 reacts with water it forms the dense white fumes dense white fumes dense white fumes are formed that dense white fumes are insoluble insoluble in water dense white fumes mean a, a cloudiness appears cloudiness dense white fumes cloudiness is formed that cloudiness is insoluble in water when SO3 not absorbed by water to absorb SO3, you have to use only 98% of H2SO4. Then the product is OLM, H2S2O7. Then you consider the flow chart for this contact process. Then last point is the flow chart. Flow chart for the contact process. In some cases, they can ask this flow chart for the three marks. Just you follow this flow chart. In that flow chart, first one is the pyrite burner pyrite burner that is sulfur burnt in this pyrite burner or iron pyrite you will get sulfur dioxide from the pyrite burner the gases coming out are the sulfur dioxide these sulfur dioxide are purified by using these different purifying chambers one is the dust chamber this one is the dust chamber then after that dust chamber gases are dried by using concentrated H2SO4. Dried gases then passed into the arsenic purifier containing ferric hydroxide, FeOH thrice, ferric hydroxide. Then passed into the, here in the arsenic purifier, arsenic impurity is removed. Arsenic impurity is removed. In that arsenic purifier, arsenic impurity removed by using ferric hydroxide. Then the gases passed into the Tyndall box. Tyndall box role is to check the purity of the gases by using a strong beam of light. Just to check the purity of the gases, we are using this Tyndall box. If the gases are impure, then again passed through the pyrite burner and gases are purified. If the gases are free from the dust particle or impurity, then passed through the catalyst chamber. Catalyst chamber packed with vanadium pentoxide, B2O5 vanadium pentoxide, where sulfur dioxide oxidized to SO3. That is, gases coming out of the catalyst chamber is SO3. 
that sulfur trioxide absorbed then passed into the absorption chamber by using 98% H2SO4. SO3 absorbed by 98% H2SO4. Then we get the volume H2S2O7. H2S2O7 commonly called as the volume. Then that volume is diluted with water. Then we get the concentrated H2SO4. This is the flow chart. This flow chart carries the three marks. This is about the preparation. Among these preparation that is one is uh, ammonia by Ebers process, second one is uh, nitric acid by Ostwald's process, third one is sulfuric acid by contact process. Out of these three, definitely one question will considered in your annual examination. Practice these three preparations.